Hi there, I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter, and I am here today with some campers. This is going to be just happy color. I decided with this watercoloring and using my watercolor pencils, I wanted to just do some happy pencil. Something cheerful with a whole lot of color in it. There's no real rhyme or reason to the colors aside from trying to put a little bit of one color on one of these Ariel campers and then reflecting a little bit of that color on the other one. So just to kind of mix them up around the whole piece. And when you're coloring, sometimes it's helpful to repeat those, those colors in a few places. Other times, just go crazy. The only thing I think on this whole thing that I worried about any kind of a highlight on was that that little grill in the front, the little barbecue. Everything else, I'm just throwing color in here. With Inktense pencils, the color is really bright, really strong, and it's super easy to do. I'm coloring this on some Arches watercolor paper, the uh, cold press kind, and you can see the texture on it. There's a lot of texture on these. I, I've also used the Arches Rough, and the, the Rough I think is even more delicious texture, but it freaks people out, so I do use the cold press more often here on YouTube because it scares folks. But if you like texture, then get a pad of the, the Rough kind because you're going to love it. So I'm just scribbling my colors in here, and a few areas I didn't quite finish because I wasn't sure which color I was going to want them to be or did I want them to be white. But we'll worry about that later on as we go. I'm also now going to be adding water to all of it. And I'm using a number eight round silver black velvet brush. And you'll watch as I go back and forth over areas several times in order to get the color to melt out. What happens with any pencil, any kind of watercolor pencil or, um, or ink tense pencil, the color sits on the highlights of the paper, the raised portions, because when you've got bumpy paper like this, the raised portions are going to catch that, that ink or that, that pencil, that pigment, and you have to break them down. Depending on what kind of pencil it is, how much pencil you've put down, and your paper and your brush, there's a lot of different factors that go into how much scrubbing you need to do back and forth in order to break it down and make it melt into watercolor. One of the cool things about Inktense pencils, as many of you already know, because I've talked about it a lot, is that with Inktense pencil, once it's dry, it's basically permanent. There's, you can move it a little bit, but not very much. So for a lot of folks, it just works better because it doesn't constantly lift the color like some watercolor pencils will. I'm jumping around different areas on this because with all watercolor pencil and all watercolor as well, the best way to approach it is to keep painting other areas, not ones right next to each other, so that you don't end up with bleeding going on. Because if you start painting things that are touching each other and the water jumps over that black stamped line, uh, yeah, a little bit of bleeding occurs, and that's because the color, the pigment, likes to travel along wherever water is. If you give it a channel in which to travel, it will travel. It just likes to do that. But if you have an issue with that, if you have a problem in the area, just dab that off with a Kleenex or a paper towel or something. You can also lift it with a clean, dry brush. So rinse your brush out really good and go over it with that clean, dry brush and basically suck all the moisture out as much as you can and you can also color the alternate area whatever that other place is you can color that with a darker color and cover it I've been known to do that a time or two I moved down to doing the ground underneath because my areas on the top on the campers were going to end up actually bleeding so I thought I'm going to distract myself by coloring the ground first and using a couple of different colors here to get the, the ground filled in and just start watercoloring that portion. When you when you do watercolor, watercolor pencils or inktense pencils after an area is wet, like the areas around there, I wanted to make sure I didn't get any of my brown colored pencils touching the, the red, the little red barbecue or the tires or anything because if you touch a 
watercolor pencil onto a, something with watercolor, you're going to get a different effect. So just give you that as a little tip. So I added extra water to make my brown color sort of fade into that background a little bit. And now, by now, the rest of everything else is dry enough that I can start moving back into the rest of my painting. I put blue in the windows because generally that's reflecting the blue sky above. But you could actually look at windows if you want to make them look realistic and see what some highlights and shadows and reflections could look like on windows. But I just was having fun with color here. I had really little interest in making it look hyper realistic until I get to one more step over at the end that you'll get to see in just a few minutes. But I'm going to move around my blue and just start working at it until those areas start to break down. So you can see there's some colors and some areas it's hard to tell why it is that one area is harder to break down than another. Like I said, it's it can be the amount of pencil, it can be the type of pencil, the, the brand, it can be from one color to another. Every color is made of something different. There's, there's different things that make up those pigments. So it could be those things. It's I don't really know the science of it. I just know sometimes it's harder and sometimes it's easier. But I also know that I do like the look in general of some pencil lines. I like it to look like I actually did some art. So rather than trying to make everything perfection, it's often just something I like to leave. I don't worry about it too much. So there are some areas on here where you, you're still going to see the texture in the finished piece, and that's just totally fine by me. So I'm just breaking down all this color over here on my second camper. Picking out the colors for this was fun. I just looked for all the brightest, happiest colors that I had and didn't worry about whether they were going to go together or anything. I just wanted happy color because there's just some days that need that. And in Washington, where I live, we have had rain, 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 like forever. And I've gotten really tired of rain. So, and there I had some green on my brush when I went to do my wood. So yeah, we have green wood. Have fun with critiquing that because I'm sure somebody will. <laughs> but stuff happens and that's okay by me. I decided to put a little bit in the background and I just sketched in some triangles with just color basically on the top so they melt down into uh, white at the bottom. And to get that blend, I'm just gonna use the tip of my brush pointing toward the pigment. And then the end of the brush that's toward my hand has more water in it. So I'm gonna make sure that the water end is away from the area where the color is. And then just continue, oh God bless you dog. I'm gonna continue to clean my brush and use as much water as I need to make this melt down and create these little triangles so that my campers have a beautiful scene to look out on in the morning when everyone there wakes up and goes out camping. So this is a great stamp set for some of these summer cards that are coming because summer's on the way. Really excited that the good summer weather is coming. So here's the finished card. I just popped it up onto a blue cardstock base with some dimensional adhesive and put my sentiment on the inside. Really fun stamp set. If you like campers, this is a must have. I have a friend who loves campers and pretty sure she's gonna be getting it. So there's a couple other videos here. If you're interested in seeing some more, you can click on my face to subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys later on. Have a really great day.